How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I feel like the biggest and the best. I'm happy. Smiling ear from ear. How is it? What's a day like where you're at right now? I mean, you know, you wake up in the morning, you know. If you got some money, you get on the phone. But I wake up in the morning, I pray. You know, I pray five times a day. I thank God for the lessons and the blessings he put us upon me, and I pray for my family and things of that matter. And, you know, I hop on the phone and I handle my business. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. Rollo, what have you been charged with or accused? Um, possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute. And how much are they saying in this allegation that you possessed? I mean, in the complaint, um, and they um, they trying to say that um, it was a lot of marijuana. Um, they saying it was on numerous occasions. Um, what they saying in the media and on the news is um, what they them, them the two charges that they say. But you know, they seeking more prior events. So you know, for right now, they got me for four counts, around four million dollars worth of marijuana. On that particular day you were arrested what happened i can't really speak of that uh events because you know it's still a pending investigation mm -hmm. so whatever i say they can use against me in the court of law when you were arrested for this there was another right. situation a raid on an apartment complex that you own so they raided this property connected to you do you know what the feds were looking for at the apartment complex <laughs> you know, that was only that was the only raid that y'all seen because it was on national T V or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But they raided all the houses that I own, you know what I'm saying? They raided my mama house, they raided my old lady house, they raided my Pakistan community. They went to um numerous of houses, you know what I'm saying? But you know, they was looking for money and things that matter. Anything valuable, you know, they took a bunch of money out um the households or whatnot. They took all my phones, all my jewelry. And, you know, my mama don't have weapons and stuff. They took that also. And my security guard had weapons in Pakistan. They took those. And they just were looking for valuable things. You know, they big on guns. So that's what they were looking for the most. Wow, so that's something new. Yeah. Not only did they raid your apartment complex that you own, but basically every other property connected to you in any way, they raided those as well. Did they perform these raids at the exact same time? Yeah, they, they hit everybody at the same time, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, they had a, a whole bunch of law enforcement. So, you know, um, they just saying two, three million on the news, but these folks actually, like, froze a lot of my accounts and things that matter. And, you know, they um, impounded all my cars or whatnot. You know, they just show you that they just don't want to see a black brother or nothing. So as of now, they have frozen your accounts, they've frozen your assets, they've right. repossessed your belongings, your right. items. Yes, sir. Let me just ask yes, correct. this question. How does, how, how's your mother living? How's your family living if they were connected to these properties? I, um, I brought my mom's, my, um, my, um, my manager, which is my best friend, and mm -hmm. um, my kid's mother. I bought all them cars on Christmas or whatnot. You know, I always take care of my people or whatnot. They, they really attack everything that they see me doing for people. I mean, you know, the apartment complex, that, that went for me, you know what I'm saying? That was for the people in the community that they had nowhere to go. I ain't never got paid any rent, money, or nothing like that. My mama, you know, they, they, they ain't take all the properties in there because, you know, that's a that's a long-time court. Like, we got to go to court for years about that, you know what I'm saying? They just put a lien on the property so I can't sell it or nothing like that. But my mama still stay in her house. But, you know, she needs transportation, so I had to pull one out, and I had to go get old the cars that I had, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of that, like... You have one minute remaining. I may have to call right back. I'm here. Okay. How you doing, brother? I'm good. All right. Thank you for calling back. So right now, you've revealed to us that the feds hit all of your properties at the same time, not just the apartment complex. That's news to us. Let me ask you, right. do you feel that you have been unjustly targeted? Because when I look at your social media account, specifically your Instagram, it's almost as if you knew they were watching you. I mean, I, I know they've been watching me for um, quite a bit of time, like for, for years or whatnot. And, um, 
You know, God gave me a gift. You know, he gave me a gift to lead. He gave me a good heart. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when you got, like, like for example, even in here, like, all the wardens and all the different people that's over the whole jail that never come to this jail or never come get an inmate, they come get me now. And, um, they just be watching people like me. And, um, like the warden had said, he said he run across dudes like me, like, every 10 years. He been working in the prison system 36 years or whatnot. And, um... It just when you got people like me that come and help the community, you know, you can just you can hang no type of people by hand. You got your Malcolm X, you got your Martin Luther King, you got numerous of people. You know what I'm saying? I turned all my wrong and I made it good. You know what I'm saying? I see what was going on in my hood, you know. I growed up around number drugs and stuff all my life. And I turned my my bad and made it good, you know what I'm saying? Like I always had a heart, I never smoked, I never drunk a day of my life. And you know, when you're doing good for the community they don't like that. They don't like to see people buy stuff and, and look out for others. They don't like to see us at the dinner table eating together, dog. They don't like that. When you got that going on, they coming for you. I don't care who you is. Let me ask you about your life because you've alluded to it a little. But I want to know about your right. life. Tell us about it. I mean, you know, I'm a greater baby. You know, I'm a original Alama kid. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Greater Memorial Hospital. I'm from a neighborhood called The Bluff, when The Bluff was The Bluff. You know what I'm saying? I'm a 90s baby. I'm very young. And, uh, you know, my mother, my mother, um, she was like 34, 35 when she had me. My pops, he was 52 years of age. You know what I'm saying? So I got an old soul. You know, my dad died at the age of 70 or whatnot. Uh, him and I didn't ever have a relationship because at the time with him, me, my mother, you know, he was her sugar dad or whatnot, so it was about the money. So uh, my mom was a drug dealer. My dad was a drug dealer. You know, my mom did drugs herself. And, um, you know, that's all I seen them doing. You know, I was raised in this one bedroom house. Uh, my sister, as well as my other three sibling brothers, my grandmama, my daddy. You know, we had a one bedroom shotgun house in the bluff. And um, I was raised there all my life, and you know, all my friends was only crackheads, um, the drug users. You know, the heroin addicts and stuff like that. So. I was born in it, you know what I'm saying? It was never a moment where I see people have jobs. Nobody around me ever had a job. You do a lot of work with young people. As a matter of fact, that was my introduction to you, was through your community right. service and through your action for young people, especially in Atlanta, uh, Big Haroon and the street groomers all speak very highly of you. And you do a lot of great work, right. and they respect you tremendously. When I talk to young folks in schools around the A, man, they they asking about Rollo. They want to know what's happening with Rollo. Uh, what inspired you to do that? Why do you work with youth? I mean, I was when I was younger, when I was going to school every day, I never knew that um, people had their own room and things. They might like other kids had their own room, and I thought everybody had to share rooms with their siblings and they parents. I thought everybody parents sold drugs. You know, you only know the things that you see yeah. when you're that young. You know what I mean? So, when I came up in the game or whatnot, I, I wanted to show people, like, look, that ain't what's going on everywhere. Like, it's another side. It's another world. You ain't got to be no drug dealer, dog. You ain't got to be... You, it, everybody ain't got to be that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I personally tried my best to graduate from school. Like, I ain't stay with my mom. I had my own apartment when I was 13, 14 years old. I still woke up every morning and made sure I'd go to school. But, you know, the streets caught up with me. You know, I started getting arrested and things of that matter. So it kind of made it hard for me to go to school because I was behind three, four months after doing time in jail. And, like, I just didn't want that same thing to happen to no other child. You know what I mean? And if people looking up to me, like, I know how much power and influence I got over the community. And if I can lead them in the right direction, I thought that's what I should do because other rappers of my generation that was rapping at the time, they never told me it was wrong. They only told me, let's get it. Let's go trap or die. They only told me to do that. So I want the trap or die. I want the let's get it. And if it's a rapper that's saying, nah, let's get it in another way, then if I can say that and I know my voice counts, I know I'm being heard, then I'm going to say it. Who inspires you? My biggest inspiration on life would have to be people like Young Jeezy, you know. He inspired me in the wrong way or whatnot, but 
he was a big inspiration on my life to get some money. You know what I'm saying? Like he was my motivation. Um, Gucci man, he inspired me. You know when he when he got out of prison, and I seen how he did a three sister also with his wife and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I, I kind of wish that he could speak out more. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I just seen he changed his whole life, and if he can change it, then others can change it. A lot of people looked at it in a negative manner because you know what I'm saying they was raised off his negative energy and whatnot. But I seen the positive side of him. You smell him? I got to actually know him. You know what I'm saying? That's a person. Has this experience changed you in any way? This experience changed me in the biggest way. You know, I ain't nothing bigger than this. I ain't nothing bigger than the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Homeland Security, ATF. You know, after you seeing the people that monitor Donald Trump in your apartment complex, that, 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 that like, that, that's a big, huge eye-opener. After being in here, with people that got hundreds of years for things that we do every day. Like dudes on the block every day with a blunt in their mouth and a gun on their hip. They just don't know that one blunt in that gun to get you seven years. Nobody ain't making it out of here to tell the people what's going on in here. And by the time the people make it out of here, they be old. They ain't, they, don't nobody know them. Don't nobody make it out of this. Like, that's why I bump my head every day and I get on my knees and I thank God for bringing me to that place because I got a voice that everybody here. I'm going to be out there week. You know what I'm saying? I go to court Thursday. I got a bum here Thursday and Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? I can get out and tell the people what's going on, but me just can't tell nobody. Like, all the people that get in here don't get out of here. I know our time is expiring, and I thank you. You've been very generous with the time. Right. There are many who are wondering, well, this is a young, obviously very successful person. How do you make your money? How did you become so successful? I mean, you know, at, at this point, you know, we're going to give an example. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the hardest thing in, the, um, in America right now, you know. When I get out of jail, I'm going to be getting $56,000 a show. You smell me? I can do 10 shows and have a half a million dollars. I always been a hustler. It ain't how much money you make, it's what you do with the money. After every show, I made sure I put money towards my apartment complex. After every feature that I did for $10,000.